All majors are welcome. CU TV is the home for Vulcan Sports. Be a part of 80 plus live games, both home and on the road. We're looking for announcers, camera operators, graphic operators, and much more. There are also opportunities to develop your own shows. Go to our YouTube page, CU TV Sports One, and see all of the content. WCAL Radio gives you the opportunity to play your music and develop your own show. Be heard locally over the air in a 40 mile radius and worldwide online. That's 91.9 FM, Power 92. SAI Media of CU TV and WCAL. Get out, join up, be seen, and be heard. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepherd. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Check one two, check check one two. Check one two, check 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 one two. Check 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 one two, check one two.
Hello, everyone, wherever you may be watching, and welcome to Adamson Stadium for today's PSAC matchup between the California Vulcans and the Clarion Golden Eagles. My name is John Sape. Alongside me here today is JJ Robinson. JJ, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, John. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I mean, it's a wonderful day today, a beautiful outside, uh, great, great weather for some football, and a great chance to see uh, if the Vulcans can tack on another victory and uh, improve themselves in the PSAC West standings. Most definitely. I'm really excited for today's matchup. I'm looking forward to it as well. The last time out for these both teams, the Vulcans were able to get a big victory last week, 31-10 to against Edinburgh. Last week at Edinburgh, week one of the two-week PS, or the uh, Penn West crossover matchup, uh, including this week. And then last week for Clarion, lost 27-20 to at Gannon. Cannon scored 27 straight unanswered, unanswered points. Gannon was on 20 to nothing, almost going into halftime. And Gannon were able to come back and get the win last week. So Clarion on a three-game slump, looking to pick up another win here today. It's definitely California coming in off a nice win last week, uh, continuing to continue that streak. Yeah, it's going to be a big one if we can take a look at the tail of the tape here for both teams. The Vulcans offense running rampant 32 points per game this season compared to the, the Golden Eagles 19.3. The Golden Eagles a little bit better on the defensive side, 22.6 points per game allowed compared to the Vulcans 24.7. The Vulcans total offense 417.3 yards per game. Impressive. Time of possession, 31 minutes, 51 seconds for Cal, 31-24 for Clarion. And the Vulcans, this is where they've been struggling a lot, 76.3 uh, penalty yards per game going against them compared to the Golden Eagles, 45.5. In a game like this where maybe you expect the Vulcans to win, that is where uh, I think slip-ups can happen and that can kind of keep teams in the game is if you're getting, giving up a lot of penalties. You're, that's, I guess I've always said they're drive killers on offense. You're putting yourself in deep holes and on defensive side you're giving the other teams more opportunities to score. Most definitely penalties are just pretty much free yards for the defense and too many penalties can re uh, result in a loss which uh, California wants to avoid so hopefully they can clean up those uh, easy mistakes. Like you just saw on your screen we'll make a quick shout out to the Vulcans own Jack Kelechi the uh, this year is semi-finalist for the William V. Campbell Trophy and it's given out by the National Football Foundation currently a semi-finalist. Hopefully you can see him win the whole thing and a uh, huge congratulations to him and hopefully for, for him and the Vulcans get a nice big win here today and uh, like I said this is a game where you maybe expect California to win because the history kind of points that way the Vulcans have not lost against Clarence since 2004 I was two years old the last time that they won I was just being born <laughs> You were just born. The Vulcans are 16-0 and in that time. The last time these two teams played was almost a year ago today where the Vulcans were able to win at Clarion 59-14. to No Mitchell was 15 for 20. Had 267 yards and three touchdowns in that game. Uh, Jaquay Jackson had seven catches for 170 yards and three touchdowns and had a receiving touchdown. Josh Miller had a 25-yard uh, blocked punt return for a touchdown. And Matt Toby had a 57-yard interception return for a touchdown as well. So... The Vulcans doing it in all three phases in uh, their matchup last year. Definitely. California also looking to continue that nice, strong effort there in all three phases in the game, especially against Clarion. Yeah, we've seen the Vulcans uh, struggle in all three phases at some times this year. So hopefully as the season progresses, all three of those uh, phases of the game on offense, defense, special teams kind of iron themselves out and get to some winning football. As we begin underway, the Vulcans with the red, the black tops with the red bottoms going from left to right. Clarion in the all-white. Vulcans will kick it off to start the game. It's Beatco going to be kicking off for California. Two men deep for Clarion. Let's play football. Let's play, absolutely. Kick going to be taken by Corbin inside his own 10-yard line. Corbin looking for an angle, working his way up the field before being brought down just shy or just around the 25-yard line. Definitely a nice cutback towards the close sideline by him getting a little push into a little pile there to get tackled. And we can take a look at the Clarion or the Vulcan defense to start. And I think the headliner for this defense has been uh, Eve Sonago all season. On the year so far for California, eight tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, and a forced fumble as well. I mean, he's been all over the place. He is a defensive monster. That is one guy I would not want to mess with in any circumstances. He is just a freak of nature. It's going to be um, Lucero with the handoff. And the nowhere to go. The Vulcans are sending him all the way back. The ball came out, too, at the end. 
I think they're going to call him down. I think uh, the, the Golden Eagles are going to count themselves lucky. That was Callan Simmons on the handoff. Simmons is only going to lose about five on, on that play for forward progress, but he got pushed back about 20. That was insane. He ended up at the five-yard line with the ball coming out. That could have been very detrimental to the Golden Eagles. I think the Vulcans will take it either way. It's going to be second and 14 from their own 20. It's been a carousel of quarterbacks this season for the Golden Eagles. It's going to be uh, Gucero. Man in motion. Going back to the to the near side. Gucero stepping up in the pocket. Gucero taking off. And Gucero with, has the legs. Runs off of one tackle before being brought down well past the first down marker. California definitely not expecting that early quick run from a quarterback gaining amazing yardage first down and so. Yeah, Gucero, one of the better rushers for this Clarion team. 37 rushes for 161 yards and two touchdowns on the season. So one of the, I mean, I think the epitome of a dual threat quarterback. Not really the most accurate in terms of throwing, but if you give that guy a lot of room, he's going to make you pay. Most definitely. Motion handoff on the carry. Nice run up the middle. That was Paul Newton. The ball came out as well. I think everyone's signaling Vulcan's way, and I think the Vulcans have it. Vulcans have the ball. Vulcans now at first down. Yeah, big play made in the middle of the field. I couldn't quite t tell which defender guards. We can take a look at the replay. Simmons with a nice hole up the middle, and then just gets popped right there in the middle of the field. Ball came out, and the Vulcans swarm on top of it. Excellent field position to start their first offensive drive. be first and 10 for California from their own 47 yard line black in the gun McCann to his left two receivers to the far side two to the near black gets a snap Clarion setting pressure black going deep down the middle of the field has a man that throw just a little bit too far in front of Eric Willis I I like the idea. We've seen him break it off a few times. That pass, just a little bit too much for him. Definitely. Pass was just a little overthrown, but receiver had him beat. That could have been very uh, amazing for the California starting offense. Hey, that would have been a good start, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Fumble recovery into a 53-yard touchdown. I think the Vulcans would take that every day of the week. Second and 10 now from their own 47. 13-13 left to go here in the first quarter. Black, hands off to McCann. McCann has a ton of room. McCann, nice cut up the field. Great vision. Gets brought down right around the 40-yard line. About a 13-yard gain on the play. First down, Vulcans. Yeah, McCann, not seen a ton of run the last few weeks. I think he's been dealing with a little bit of an injury. I remember Coach talking about that on the Coach's show. And uh, nice to see him back out here because when the Vulcans have him, Boyd, and Williams, all three working very well in the backfield, it's pretty hard to as a defense to keep track of everything. Most definitely all, but all the running backs with their different skill sets being able to help the Vulcans win. Quick play action pass. Pass is caught on the near side uh, by Natel Blessett. He's going to get brought down right around that first down marker, and I think they're going to give it to him at that 30-yard line. So for another fresh set of downs for the Vulcans on offense. Vulcan offense really out here attacking early with a short game in the run game, really being able to catch this clearing defense off guard, especially after that first play uh, on the incomplete deep pass. First and 10 from the Clarion 31. The Vulcans looking to strike first. Black, play action pass, looking, now firing to his right. That pass is caught by Willis, and Willis going to get pushed out of bounds right around the 20 yard line at the 21 so nice big gain on the play nine yards on the reception some really off press defense here by the clarion defense especially on this near sideline where most of the completions have came so far yeah the clarion i think after that initial play where they saw willis get deep behind i think maybe a little bit worried about having someone sneak back there giving up the things underneath but not allowing anything over the top second and one from the 21 Black, play action pass again, screen pass this time to Willis. That one just a little bit too high for him. Goes in and out of his hands, third down and one now for Cal. Third down and one. Yeah, 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 three and four switch. 
And we've seen the Vulcans do pretty well throughout the season on third downs. And we've seen this offense get off to some slow starts. Last week, only about 10 points in that first half against Edinburgh. But the week before, great against Shepard. But the week before that, a little bit slow out of the gates against Kutztown. So it's been kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde situation where it's been good, it's been bad, it's been good, it's been bad to start the game. I think the Vulcans kind of want to write the, like steer the ship in the right direction. Third and one, handoff to McCann. McCann gets a couple blockers and gets enough for the first down. Nice cut back there. You see him going towards the outside, but court cuts back towards the inside of that uh, offensive line. Offensive line able to make some amazing holes for him to enter. Yeah, the, like you said, the offensive line that time got a great push. On that inside, it's uh, Basham, Charlton, and Jackson. The two guards in the center just getting a nice push up front. And we don't see the Vulcans run a lot under center. So whenever they're under center, when they run the ball, that offensive line has to get a great push, and they did exactly that there. First and 10 now for California. Now in the red zone from the Clarion 17-yard line. The Vulcans have a chance to get themselves on the board. Play action pass again. Quick throw and caught. And that is Eric Willis. And Willis going to get brought down right around the 5-yard line. A lot of the quick outs really being open early for California. This quick game really working in succession early in this first half. We've seen this work a lot. I think in like NFL terms and on in terms of offense, like if you think about like the Miami Dolphins, their whole their whole point of their offense is quick throws, getting the receivers that are super fast open early, and then just hitting them. And I mean, we saw them score 70 points last week against Denver. I'm not saying the Vulcans are going to do that, but I think you can see the uh, maybe a bit of the inspiration behind like this quick passing attack. Definitely get the get the ball out fast, keep the quarterback clean. First and goal from the six. Play action pass again, quick over pass over the middle, caught for the touchdown. That's D.A.B. Johnson, and that's going to be the Vulcans' first strike of the game. 6-0 California, 9.56 to go, awaiting the extra point. Amazing intro for this Vulcan team in general. Forces a fumble and then goes down and scores a touchdown on their opening drive. California really making a statement here early. And we've seen the Vulcans struggle a lot in terms of turning the ball over, and now we've seen them finally... Uh, kind of reap the benefits of getting some turnovers on the other end, putting some points on the board after forcing a turnover. Biko on to attempt the extra point. Snap high, the hold down there, the kick is up, and Biko's kick is good. 7-0, 9.56 to go. We'll be right back here on CTV. CTV Sports 1, the PSEC Network, and 91.9 FM WCAL. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepard. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium as the Vulcans have a 7-0 lead over the Clarion Golden Eagles. The Vulcans forced a fumble, recovered it, were able to score on the touchdown pass to Johnson. And uh, so far, I think uh, everything you would have wanted from the Vulcans to start the game. Can't ask for much of a better start. Force the fumble and then go down and score a touchdown early. Yeah, I think this is the first one of the first times we've seen the Vulcans strike first on the offensive end. Kickoff going to be taken at the five-yard line again. Great return this time by Corbin. He's going to get brought down past the 35. So great return and a good start here for the Golden Eagles to start their second possession. Golden Eagles looking to definitely rewrite the ship. They want to forget that last drive, continue with their game plan, and uh, go down the field. I think it's so hard as a team early on because it just wavers your confidence, especially a team in Clarion who's lost three games in a row where the offense has been a bit of a struggle and it seemed like they were going pretty well to start, but then you turn the ball over on your first possession. I think uh, you have to have, have like that Monday morning quarterback syndrome, just kind of forget about it and move on. Definitely. It wouldn't be surprised to see some passes here early. Man in motion, quick throw. That pass a little bit too far, intended for Simmons, but uh, Garcia 
under a ton of pressure already and couldn't quite uh, be as accurate as he would have wanted to been on that pass. And going back to the three losses that the Clarion have had in, in succession, two of them have been in heartbreaking fashion two weeks ago against, uh, I believe, Lockhaven. Lost on a reverse flea flicker Hail Mary Ooh. on the last play of the game. 21-20 loss. And then the week after that last week against Gannon, they, like I said, they were up 20 to nothing going into the final minutes of the second quarter. And then Gannon scored 27 unanswered points to win the game. Quick throw on second and 10. That pass is caught and being pushed out of bounds. That's Andy Martin. Right around that first down mark, it looks like he's going to be just shy. So third down and two now for Clarion. California really good at stopping these receivers from getting any yards after catch. Really good at just closing in fast and wrapping up. Yeah, we've seen the Vulcans this year and historically run a ton of man coverage. And so, like you talked about, those corners are there always on the scene making sure that that uh, any of these receivers are not making some big plays after the fight. Third and two from the Clarion 42. 9-10 left to go. Garcia gets the snap looking, firing to his right. That pass is caught for the first down. That's a, a Koran Al Alni with the reception. Going to get pushed out of bounds inside of Vulcan territory at the 49. Clarion really... Uh, focusing on their pass game this drive. I haven't seen one run yet. <clears throat> a lot of the stuff to the outside. Interested to see if they'll take any shots down the middle. And this offense, uh, maybe one of the stranger ones you'll see out of any team of very heavily motion based, as we've, as we've seen already. You have receivers, you, you see a lot of this five wide sets, three receivers on the near, two on the far, one of them being Simmons. Now Simmons in motion, going to be alongside. Um, Gersio now Gersio quick pass that pass incomplete into a dangerous spot intended for Corbin but a few Vulcans were right there on the scene amazing defense even if the, he would have cut the ball two Vulcans were in the area ready to light him up yeah that is a that's a throw right there where you as a quarterback you learn a lot about uh, trying to protect your receivers and I don't think that was a throw that was uh, that kind of follows that principle because Corbin would have gotten rocked definitely that could have been very dangerous for the Clarion. Corbin in motion. Play action pass. Screen pass again, and the Vulcan sniffed it out from a mile away. Nice, amazing uh, read on there. Able to tackle them for a loss. Yeah, and like I said, we've seen a lot of the similar plays. We haven't seen Clarion so far dig deep into the playbook. We've seen this, this screen type play a few times. Man in motion, but the Vulcans have clearly done their homework. Very well aware that the Clarion Golden Eagles are going to do this. They're bringing up a third and 12 now. Clarion coming up with a three receiver set on the bottom and one running back in the backfield. 7.47 left to go. Third and 12. Corbin in motion again. Curcio stepping up into the pocket, going deep down the field. That pass nowhere near anybody. Intended for Martin. That pass about 15 yards over thrown, and the Vulcans pick up a big third down stop. Fourth and 12 now. The ball on the Clarion 49-yard line. Looks like the punt team is coming out for Clarion and California back to receive. It's going to be Willis back to receive the punt, and we've seen this man in open space plenty of times, and I think he has to be one of the most exciting players in the entirety of college football to watch. I mean, that man, we, were t we had discussions about who could win in a, in a race, early on a few weeks ago, but if I started at the 50 and he started at the end zone, the clarion punt, end over end, it's going to get a great roll, going to get fielded inside of the one yard line. Great punt once again from clarion. That is number 94, Tyler Wilson. And I mean, I don't think you could have asked for a better punt, rolled all the way down to the two yard line. Amazing uh, ball placement there by the punter. California really looking to get out of the shadows of their own goalpost. While we go a second, you take a look at your screen. The Vulcans Hall of Fame class of 2024 has been announced. And it's a star-studded one. Enslin, Larson, Russell, Walker, Weidman, and uh, Dier, uh, Dier, I can't say her name. I feel so bad because she was an unbelievable player for the softball team. But that class of 2024 has been announced and will be honored later on this year. Congratulations to all of them. Maybe one day I can be a part of that. That's nice. 
First and ten from their own two-yard line. Black going to hand this one off to McCann. McCann finding some space, trying to make his way to the outside. Black up to block. Black sets a great block as McCann going to rush out of bounds just shy of the 20-yard line. Not many, running, uh, not many quarterbacks that I see willing to put their body on the line like that for an amazing block, for an amazing first down. You know, you talk about a man that is uh, willing to do anything for the team. Black hands it off and gets out there in front immediately, just trying to set a block on the edge. And does exactly that 15-yard gain on the play. First and 10 now from the Vulcan 17. Now they have plenty of breathing room. It's a communication with Black with the line. Yeah, we've seen Clarion send some pressure a couple of times so far. Handoff again to McCann. McCann patiently waiting for the blockers uh, to get something going in front of him and pays off for him as picks off about five, maybe six on the play. Dylan Tingle on the stop. Tingle on the stop that time for the Golden Eagles. 6.13 left to go here in the first quarter to play the Vulcans. The 7 nothing lead. Two receivers on the near side for Black. One on the far. Kalechi. Handoff once again this time to McCann. And McCann trying to fight forward. Going to pick up a few more, but going to be shy of that first down marker. Clarion really seemed to be ready for the right up, run up the middle, stopping them for a short gain of only around two yards. Third and manageable, though, this time for California. Third and two from their own 26. We've seen them convert on third down already. Clarion defense still playing a little bit of off coverage on this close side of the field. And I think there was some movement on that offensive line. I think the Vulcans are going to get set back five yards. That one's going to go against number 75, Sean Knight, the left tackle. And it went from a third and manageable to maybe a third and medium now, third and seven now for California. Isaiah Cameron coming into the game at running back to switch up a little bit of personnel for the different uh, plan on third down. And we've seen, uh, we've seen Cannon, or Cameron, excuse me, do some great work in the passing game. I mean, we, we saw him last week. It was like a third down and 15, third down and 20, and picked up the entire thing because he's just able to make men miss. Black throw. That pass is caught for a first down by Willis, who spun out of bounds immediately afterwards. But great throw and even some good coverage there made by Clarion. But it doesn't matter. The Vulcans pick up a first down. Vulcans knew where the first down marker was. They hit it right on the money, getting the first down. I think it was uh, Trevina on the coverage. Vulcans going on the hurry-up offense. Black, that pass incomplete, trying to find DeMonte Martin on the outside, but great coverage from Clarion forces the incomplete pass. Second down and 10. And I like the Vulcans switching up the tempo a little bit, you know, going, going no huddle, just straight to the line, trying to clutch Clarion out on the substitutions, but that didn't work. They're going to go back, switch out some players, and, uh, and try, to, try to switch it up a little bit. Definitely another substitution, uh, McCann coming back into the game. Keeping the defense on their toes. That's the name of the game. Second and 10 from the 30. Handoff to McCann. McCann waiting for the space to be made. Going to pick up minimal, maybe half a yard to a yard. Third down and long now for California. Clarion was definitely ready for that. Uh, Clarion looking like they're already backing up their coverage, ready for a pass. Yeah, one of the stars on this Clarion defense is number five, Buzzle. He's been all over the place. Griffin Buzzle on the season, 27 tackles, four for loss, and a fumble recovery to boot. One of the players on this Clarion defense to look out for. Third and nine now from the 31. Black gets the snap. Stepping up, has plenty of time. Black going to take off and keeping himself black. Rushing forward, going to pick up the first down and a lot more. Black showing off the wheels, going to get brought down at the 45. Amazing uh, pocket presence by Black there. Pressure coming from the back. He feel it, Him feeling that and able to take off for a nice 12-yard gain in a first down. And great coverage there, but the Vulcans on uh, the offensive line gave Black plenty of time to make the decision and 
We've seen, we've seen Black take off with it a couple of times and picks up a nice first down. First and 10 now from the Vulcan 45. Definitely Three. one of the more physical quarterbacks I've ever seen. Not, not afraid to take some hits. He does not care. Like you said, he, he'll do anything. We've already seen him get up in front, throw some blocks. First and 10, handoff to McCann again. McCann has a couple of blockers but gets tripped up end over end. I believe it was number 45 that time. Dylan Tingle was able to trip up McCann and a McCann Vulcan player slow down. to get up. Yeah, it looks like McCann, like I said, slow to get up. He's going to go back to the ground. And that's going to be a big blow for the Vulcans. We've, like we talked about, McCann, I believe, sat out in that second game against Shepard as he was dealing with a little bit of an injury. We didn't really see much of him last week. And I think it looks like still struggling with that same thing. While we have a second, we can take a look at the PSAC West standings. Not really much to go off so far. Four teams 1-0, four teams 0-1 in the conference, but slip topping it, followed by IUP, California, and Gannon, all 1-0 in conference standings. And then Clarion Burrow, Merciers, and Seton Hill all at 0-1. So... I mean, the season's still young, plenty to play for. Most definitely. I'm excited to watch all these teams as the season continues. Looks like McCann's able to get back to his feet. He's going to walk off the field on his own power. Hopefully everything's okay with him. He's able to continue in this game. I know we're gonna, he's probably going to get a little bit. I mean, he's definitely going to get a little bit of a break. Hopefully we can see him at some point in this game because he's important for this Vulcans offensive attack. Like I said, they average 400 yards, over 400 yards a game in total offense and he and Boyd who's now on the field are a big part of that most definitely he was running off the field on his own power uh, most likely so showing he went down but he's ready to get back up and go back in as soon as possible of course California wanting to pace him so he doesn't get injured once again Black hands off to Boyd this time Boyd powerful run up the middle going to pick up three maybe four big gives up a third down and manageable now for California Third and six now for Cal. A couple of substitutions made for the Vulcans. Three coming off. It's going to be uh, uh, Cameron, Kalechi, and Willis all back on the field for the Vulcans for this third down. I wouldn't be surprised if Clarion decides to send the house here, force Black to make a quick decision. Black gets a snap. Rolling now to his right, has plenty of room. Black stepping up, going to keep it himself again, and Black going to fall forward and pick up the first down. And it looks like a maybe a bit of a late hit on the back end. I'm surprised. Nothing was called. It was number 25, Matthew McGregor, who laid down a hit. As we can take a look at the replay. As he's going, Black going to the ground, we saw McGregor come over top of him. Definitely there a questionable call not to throw the flag. Uh, from what I can see, it was a late hit, but Black able to get up a little slow, but he was able to get up. Um, looks like he's fine now. There's going to be a holding penalty against Clarion on the back end. That was number uh, 27, uh, Terrell Booth, the, uh, the guilty party. So that'll tack on an extra 10 yards. It's going to be first and 10 for the Vulcans at the Clarion 33. 128 left to go here in the first quarter. The Vulcans, like I said, they'll take that. We've seen uh, we've seen penalties kill them time and time again this season, but moves them ever so closer to getting themselves into the end zone. Black gets the snap. Under some pressure, going deep down the middle of the field. Has a man. That pass just incomplete. Had Martin. And Martin just couldn't quite track that flight of the ball and it's going to fall incomplete. Ball just goes straight through his arms. That would have been a for sure touchdown for California. Yeah, he had the man beat, but looked like the defender with some coverage, like that coverage there, threw up an arm pretty late to try to maybe obstruct the view of the ball from Martin, and Martin couldn't quite pull that one in. That could have been a big play for the Vulcans. Second down and 10 now from their own 30, or from the Clarion 33. 106 left to go here in the first quarter. Three receivers set for California. Hand off to Boyd again. Boyd looking for some room. Bounce it to the outside. Breaks off of not one but two defenders. It's going to run over a third. Going to get brought down 
at the 26-yard line, third down and three now for Cal. Amazing job by Boyd to be able to just bounce that to the outside. He got stuffed at first, but uh, instead of taking a loss, he took a positive gain for the California Vulcans. The way that he runs the ball, it is just so fun to watch. I mean, I said it last week. He runs like he just does not give a – I can't say the other word, but he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't care. He's out there. He's running around, and no one can stop him in his mind. Third down and three for Cal. From the Clarion, 26. Handoff again to Boyd. Boyd looking for some room, fighting for it. And Boyd going to get brought down. The forward progress, I think, is going to mark him just shy. Now a big decision as the Vulcans. It looks like the time's going to run out of this first quarter. So a big decision to come back for the for as we begin the second quarter of whether or not they keep the offense out there and go for it. The way it looks, California didn't even attempt to bring anybody out with a huddle for the offense. Wouldn't be surprised to see California try and pick up the one yard that they need. That's going to be the end of the first quarter here at Adamson Stadium. The Vulcans with a 7 nothing to lead over the Clarion Golden Eagles. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on CUTV. CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network at 91.9 FM, WCAL Power 92. Suffering from World Cup withdrawal? Well, Vulcan men's and women's soccer has you covered. Come up and watch the region's best soccer teams do battle in a combined 18 home games at the beautiful Phillipsburg Soccer Complex. In addition, three men's and three women's home games will be featured live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans for up-to-date information on all things Vulcan soccer. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium as we begin the second quarter of coverage between California and Clarion. And I think all of our questions at the end of the first quarter are answered. The Vulcans sending out the offense to try to p convert this fourth down and one. Clarion looking like they're going to bring the house of motion from California. Black going to keep it himself and Black going to get plenty for that first down. Going to pick up two, maybe three yards. And the Vulcans offense... Offensive drive, excuse me, continues. Amazing call. A lot of motion in the backfield to try and catch uh, Clarion off guard, but nothing too difficult there. Just take the snap and throw yourself forward for that first down. And I think very smartly as well, they sent uh, number 42, Aiden Curry, uh, the tight end slash fullback, in motion. They moved him just behind Black to try to give him that little extra push in the back. First and 10 now from the 21, quick throw. That's, this one's caught on the outside by Hopkins, who's looking for any sort of room, and Hopkins going to get ripped down after picking up one, maybe two. Clarion really had that one sniffed out. California going with a lot of short game early in this first half of play. Um, Clarion really seemed to be ready for that one there, sniffing out the quick pass and wrapping him up for only a gain of one. Hopkins, who had a big game last week against Edinburgh, six catches for 121 yards and a touchdown. That you was know, his first reception of the day. I know Black in the Vulcan offense are going to want to get him heavily involved in this one. Second and nine from the 20. Three receivers on the far side, one on the near. Boyd in the backfield alongside Black. Black gets the snap, firing down the right-hand side. That pass is going to be incomplete, trying to find Hopkins on that far side end zone. And that one just going to fall incomplete. Third down and nine now for Cal. Really good coverage there by Clarion. Just getting right in his way. Uh, California not being able to see the ball until just as it drops past him. Yeah, it was number three, Connor Lysak on the coverage there for Clarion. It's going to bring up another big third down here. The Vulcans have a chance to take a pretty commanding hold of this game. They're able to get themselves into the end zone here. Ob obviously, still plenty of time, but gets themselves in a better spot. Third and nine. Black gets the snap. Stepping up, quick throw. That pass caught, but brought down immediately. It's Cameron with the reception and a great tackle on the scene. That time by number 45, Tingle. And that's going to bring up a fourth down, and the Vulcans 
going to bring out the field goal unit. California really good with that offensive line, but the clearing defense did just get behind Black almost for a sack. But luckily for Black, he has that amazing pocket presence and is just able to feel the defense behind him getting the ball out quickly. And we've seen Claren give up some of the underneath stuff, but that time they were not letting anything underneath go. Beatco on to attempt the field goal. Beatco's kick is up, and Beatco's kick is good. That's going to be 10-0 California. 12.45 left to go here in the second quarter. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on CTV, CTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network at 91.9 FM. Vulcan Volleyball is back, and you can have the best seat in the house. The Convocation Center will be rocking with 11 home games featuring some of the best teams in the region and the PSAC. All home games will be streamed live on CU TV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans on all social media platforms for up-to-date schedules and information. Vulcan Volleyball and you, a winning combination. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium as the Vulcans now extend their lead to 10. 10-0 was scored, 1245 left to go after the field goal from Anthony Bico. Like we talked about last week, I was talking to uh, the Bicos at our game against Edinburgh. Anthony, last year, one of them didn't miss a single field goal outside of the game against Shepard this year so far. Three for four now on the season, the only miss against Shepard. The kickoff going to be fielded inside of the own five. And then, once again, a nice return from Corbin is going to get brought down at his own 25. Corbin has been really good at finding the holes within these kick returns, um, gaining some amazing yards. Not not saying I'm, he's not taking no fair catches here. He wants the yardage himself. And I want to make sure I, I point this out because I know that because they told me that they watched this afterwards. I'm not talking any smack on, on Anthony. He's arguably the greatest kicker. In the, in, and he's well on his way to being the best kicker in terms of Vulcan history. Outside of games against Shepard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about, um, about Shepard, but... Lucky they for us? They have his number. Lucky for us? This isn't Shepard. Exactly. So he's making the field goals, nonetheless. First and 10 now from the Clarion 25. Man in motion. It's going to be a quarterback keeper. Quick run, and it's able to bounce off a couple of tackles. That's Zach Benedict. On the carry, stepping in at quarterback, going to pick up five on the play. Nice uh, read option there, keeping the ball for himself, cutting the outside. California uh, giving up around six yards there. Amazing choice on the quarterback option. And we've seen Claren this season run with two, even three quarterbacks at times. It's It's been uh, Garcia and Benedict, and Benedict going to stick in there once again on this play, at least, for Clarion. Three receivers on the far side. Corbin in motion again. Benedict stepping up, going to get hit immediately. That ball up in the air. Time seemed to stop for a moment. That pass incomplete, and the Vulcans nearly able to get another takeaway. Ball seemed to float there in the, after he got tipped uh, by Clarion. Uh, it seemed like it just floated there for a moment. Ball does go to the down, uh, to the ground, though. Third down, Clarion. Yeah, it was trying to find Oliver Van Dyke. That passed a little bit out of his way, and it was Israel Xavier, who was just unblocked and got a clean hit on a Benedict. And that ball just, like I said, it just seemed to float up there forever, but none of the Vulcans were able to get underneath of it. Third and four now from the Clarion 31. Benedict going to keep it himself again. Great dis great run. Benedict trucks over a Vulcan defender now inside of California territory. Benedict is going to get out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Benedict really just taking off and lowering his shoulder to get uh, through the California defense for an amazing game down the field. Yeah, never one, never like to, uh, to point <laughs> that stuff out, but it was Keith Charney, number 31 for California who just got ran over by Benedict. And we've seen, we saw uh, in that first quarter, Claren, Clarion, excuse me, were only able to get two first downs that entire first quarter. I think matching that so far in this one. First and 10 
from the 38-yard line of California. Benedict still in the game. Benedict, screen pass completed, but brought down immediately. It's Simmons again on the reception, but three, four Vulcans back there, right there to make the stop. California sending the house there, not giving up any cutback lane for Clarion to scramble, and then also getting the nice tackle for loss on the screen pass. Second and 13 now from the Vulcan 41-yard line. Have you seen anything so far? It's a, the, the Vulcan coverage on these screen passes have been great. They've been well aware. They've been ready for him time and time again. 10.25 left to go here in the second quarter. Man in motion. It's going to be a handoff to the motion man. It's Elaney on the carry. Going to pick up four, maybe five on the play. Bring up a third down and eight for Clarion. It's Elaine on the carry. Third and long here. California seeing what happens when they leave some open holes in that line. Uh, quarterback just taking off for yards. Wouldn't be surprised if I see some linebackers just sitting back just a little bit now. Yeah, I don't think we're really within the range for a field goal here. Curtis on the season for Clarion. Five for seven, but as long as it's 30 yards. So definitely want to pick up a couple extra ones. Design run again, but the Vulcans kept a man there, but Clarion's blockers are able to get up in front. And it's uh, Benedict again on the carry. And Benedict going to pick up enough for the first down again. Yeah, these design QB draws for Clarion have been working out pretty well. And that time, Benedict did a better job at disguising it. Like, stood back there in the pocket for a good one, two seconds before deciding to take off. California really struggling to stop uh, him from running the ball. Uh, just for some amazing gains. Every run has been a first down so far. Benedict again. Another handoff to the motion man. And it's Elaine on an, with another carry. And Elaine once again going to pick up maybe four on the play. Darnie and Silva on the stop. Darnie and Silva on the stop for California. It's going to be a gain of three. Second and seven now from the Clarion or from the California 25. Clarion looking to uh, knock it quietly into the night here. Try to get some points on the board. And try to keep things closer in this game. 8.25 left to go here in the first half. And we've seen the Vulcans do a great job at preventing the pass attack from Clarion from coming to fruition. The Vulcans now need to be able to stop the run. Benedict stepping up again. His throw almost intercepted on that far side. The Vulcans were right there. It was number 23, Ty and Lobin breaking up, but two flags thrown in the backfield. I think this one's going to go against California. And it looks like some words being exchanged inside the huddle. I saw Dominic Solomon Jr. for California in amongst the mix, and the Vulcans are going to take him out. And it's going to be a roughing the passer call against the Vulcans. Number 96 for California, a Josh Hugh going to be called for the roughing the passer, as we can say, take a look at the replay. Yeah, and Hugh looks like he got there maybe just a little bit late after the throw and w would have been brought up a third down. Now it's a first down and 10 from the Vulcan 12. Right there again, something California has been struggling with, these costly mistakes, giving up easy yardage. That could have been a third down, but it is a first and 10 now. Yeah, we've seen penalties or drive extenders. Benedict under center now. Benedict with the handoff to Simmons. Simmons trying to find a lane. Bounces it back. Going to get brought down after a big gain at around the five-yard line. And that's with this motion offense that Clarion likes to run. It's very hard to ever tell who has the ball because the man in motion looked like he had it. I thought maybe Benedict could have kept it for the play-action bootleg maybe. But that time it was the handoff to Simmons right up the middle. And gain of seven. Now second and three from the Vulcan five. Clarion really liking to use that misdirection. They never want California to know who has the ball until it's too late. Because by the time the Vulcans don't read it well, by the time they get it, Clarion's already passed on Benedict on the carry. Benedict going to work his way into the end zone for the Golden Eagle touchdown. Another run from him and an impressive offensive drive from the Golden Eagles results in six. 
amazing draw there. He, uh, pushing through the line just to make sure he can reach out for that touchdown, which he does get. And the Vulcans, the, the defense going to need uh, to figure out and need to be able to figure out a way to stop Benedict. Curtis on to attempt the extra point. Curtis, his kick is up, and the Vulcans are nearly able to get a block on it. But Curtis's kick is good. The score 10 to 7. Vulcans still with the lead. 7-19 left to go here in the first half. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on CUTV. CUTV Sports 1, the PSUC Network, and 91.9 FM. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepherd. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium as Benedict on the quarterback keeper closes the game to a three-point game, 10-7 now with 7-19 left here in the, the first half. It's going to be Hamlin and Williams back to, deep to receive Wilson on the kickoff. Hamlin going to field this at his own six-yard line. Hamlin trying to find any sort of room. Great, great downfield coverage from the special teams unit of Clarion, going to bring down Hamlin inside of his own 20 at the 19-yard line. And we can take another look at that touchdown run. And like I said, it was a very impressive drive from this Clarion offense. That first quarter didn't really seem to get anything going. They brought Benedict in during this quarter, and they were able to drive down the field. Benedict showing off the legs a bit, able to work his way down the field, pick up some big yardage, and able to get into the end zone. Definitely, that run game, really the biggest hitter for uh, for Clarions. They had that uh, third and uh, third and uh, manageable yard, and uh, Clarion taking off with a nice run. I think a bit of a miscommunication between the backs is Cameron and and McCann in the backfield. They ran into each other. McCann going to lose two on the play after that handoff and. Bit unfortunate. I think um, Cameron and McCann both running into the same direction into each other. Yeah, not helping uh, California out at all there. And uh, Clarion seen that little bit of uh, jumble in the back, just being able to lock it down. Second down and 12 now from the 17. 6.38 left to go here in the first half of play. The Vulcans get the ball to start the second half. So it would be nice to put some points on the board here at the end. Handoff to Boyd this time. Boyd. Looking for some room. We're going to get brought down right around the original line of scrimmage. So a third down and 10 now for California. Gate Hall on the stop. And two on the play. Third down and 10. And the Vulcans, after starting off on third downs very well, um, have not been able to convert their last couple. And this one's going to be a bit of a test for them. Third and 10 from their own 19. Four receiver set for Cal. Cameron in the backfield alongside Black. The Vulcans need to get a playoff here shortly. Five seconds left on the play clock. Black gets the snap. Now rolling to his left. Has a man play out of the pump fake. Is now Black trying to get his way to the outside. Black and get brought down just past the 25 to the 26. Looks like it'd be a fourth and three. Yeah, I, I like the idea for Cal or from Black there. Didn't have a man open and thought maybe if he could just turn the corner on the outside, he's going to be able to pick up enough for the first down. Picked up six on the play. Fourth and four now for California. And Rosensteel and the punting unit going to come on for California. Rosensteel on to punt. 
And it's going to be Corbin back deep to receive for Clarion. Corbin standing at around his own 35-yard line. Rosen steals punt. High spinning one. No return going to be made. And it's going to get fielded inside of the 35 at the 34. So a decent punt that time from Clayton Rosenstiel. And the Clarion Golden Eagles offense is going to make their way back onto the field. California really nice there. Nice punt there. Be able to flip field position. Clarion all the way back there on their 36-yard line it looks like. When you take a look at today's PSAC schedule, a great slate of games here for you today. Obviously, our game, California versus, uh, versus Clarion, and amongst many other ones here today. Great. Uh, I mean, you want to talk about the beginning of the season. Every game is exciting because ev not, nothing's really defined quite yet. It's really good to see maybe some potential upsets going on today. Definitely like to see the potential all the teams have. Benedict back to pass. Benedict surrounded by like five Vulcans going to get hit as he's thrown. And that pass is well incomplete. I think Benedict very, very uh, smart and did a very good job at getting that ball out when he did. Because like I said, there were four or five Vulcans in the area ready to make a hit. Definitely. And luckily for him, he did overthrow the ball. There was two California defenders on their receiver. Second down and 10 now from the Clarion 36. Vulcan making a few defensive substitutions. I think the big game today, IUP at Slippery Rock tonight, 6 o'clock. One of the bigger games this year. Flag thrown. Flag on the play. Part of snap. False start against Clarion, but I mean, if there's a game to watch out for, that's going to be one tonight, 6 p.m. at the Rock. I might, I might have to pull that up on my phone later tonight. Yeah, that's going to be one to watch tonight. I mean, just today in terms of the Vulcan campus, very busy day. A couple soccer games, a tennis match, a volleyball match today too. I know we'll be there covering that one later on today. So uh, a great slate of sports going on here today. Most definitely excited to see all the results of all the games from all the sports. Hopefully everyone results in a Vulcan win. Benedict keeps it himself, and Benedict has a hole and has a ton of room. Benedict working his way to the outside, going to get brought down at his own 49-yard line. Great fake. Fake the handoff to Corbin, and the, like, the, the line just parted for him. A huge hole and picks a big gain. I'm going to be honest there. I thought the running back had the ball. I saw him get lit up in the back, and then obviously Didn't McCann know. with the ball. I thought he I thought he had it as well, but Benedict just pulling it's like a rabbit out of a hat, just like pulled it away at the last second. And like I said, there was just no one anywhere close there for <laughs> on that that line and Benedict just had a clean run right there. First and ten now from the forty nine. Benedict back to pass going quickly. That pass incomplete. Benedict is hit again. California really good at bringing that pressure and just getting these hits on the quarterback. Definitely not what Clarion wants to be seeing here in only the first half of the game. First uh, quarter for this quarterback. Yeah, like I said, when every time Clarion throw, throws the ball, the Vulcans, that interior defensive line is getting a ton of pressure towards, towards the quarterback. But Benedict, so far so good at being able to get the ball out and preventing himself from taking a sack. It's going to be second down and 10. There's going to be a flag thrown. Flag on the play. An illegal substitution going to go against Clarion, so that'll back them up five more yards. That'll bring up a second down and 15. This will be a second and 15 now from the Clarion 44. More substitutions coming from Clarion. This time I believe they're legal. Clarion making some legal substitutions this time. Second and 15 from the 44. 349 left to go here in the first half. After that, it's been a bit of a quiet last couple of minutes. Benedict stepping up. Benedict rolling to his left. And Benedict going to get brought down. And that's going to be an incomplete pass. And nice by Benedict to able to uh, 
be able to scramble outside of the pocket, look for anyone downfield, never just take his eyes out of downfield, throw the ball out of play. Yeah, I think Benedict, I think the best part about it, had the wherewithal to, to know that he was going to get brought down for his sack, so just threw it out. Wasn't really a receiver in the area, but it wasn't in the pocket, so no intentional grounding. Third and 15 now from the Clarion 44. The Vulcans need to get a big stop here. California playing some off defense now. Yeah, One safety. Re you can't really send everyone in coverage because you know Benedict likes to take off. The Vulcans sending a ton of pressure. Benedict going down this near side. That pass nearly picked off again. That throw way underthrown. It was Keith Charney who got run over from Benedict a few possessions before. Almost took that one away from him, but nonetheless, the Vulcans get a stop. Fourth down and 15 now for Clarion. Looked like uh, they were passing the ball to California there. Uh, luckily for Clarion, California unable to get the interception. And Benedict once again hit as he's thrown, so that one kind of looked like a dock out of his arms, but Vulcans bat. <laughs> Charney knocks that one down incomplete. Fourth and 15, Willis back to receive. Whistle blown as it looked like one of the Vulcans came on late. And it looks like California took their timeout just before that punt went off. And I Coach Dunn a little bit upset about that. I think rightly so because it looked like Charney was trying to get back out there. But, I mean, at that point, you're way too late. Luckily for them, the kick didn't get off in time. Coach Dunn really good uh, at using these timeouts wisely. Definitely not one he wanted to use, but uh, luckily he was able to get it off in time. Still two timeouts left for Californians. We can take a look at their upcoming schedule. and doesn't get any easier after today at IUP next week for the Cold Bowl before hosting Seton Hill on homecoming day on October 14th before traveling to the Rock for a game against them on the 21st before hosting Merciers here at home on the 28th and then two away games to end the season at Gannon and at East Stroudsburg to wrap up the Vulcan season. The Vulcans make an adjustment. They're going to have two players deep. They're going to have Hopkins and Willis back deep to receive this punt. Wilson back to punt for Clarion. And another nice punt from Wilson. Not going to take the bounce that they would have wanted this time, but still going to be pretty favorable. That's one's going to be downed at the 24-yard line. California really looking to make some adjustments. Uh, went three and out early uh, on that last possession with a nice punt downfield, which led to another punt by Clarion. California looking to strike back with the with some three-minute offense. And like we've said, we've seen this offense go through some hot and cool stretches where it seems like they've been so, so good, but at, at times it just seems like they can't get anything going. And then obviously they want to be more of the former than they are the latter. They want to be firing at all times, and I think it's a great chance to do it. Strike on some points before the second half where you get the ball back to start. First and 10 now for Black in the gun, stepping up, evades the pressure. Black has a man down the field. That pass is caught by Willis, and Willis, there's no one catching him. 10-5 into the end zone for the Vulcan touchdown. And just like that, one play is all it takes. The Vulcans score a touchdown, but there is a flag thrown in the backfield. And wipe it away, holding call. Going to go against the Vulcans. And we've... We saw this when they scored the 95-yard touchdown the week or in that week against Kutztown where the, they, they had a big play, it got called back, and then they scored the touchdown right afterwards. And I think if you're California, maybe looking for something similar here now first and 20 from their own 14. Very unfortunate there for California. Nice open receiver downfield for the touchdown, obviously taken back. And if you want to talk about how penalties are, are a killer, I mean, they just took six points off the board for you right there. And they just in increased my heart rate by a, a metric ton. First and 20 from the 14. Handoff this time to Boyd. Boyd runs right into a wall of Golden Eagles defenders. Picks up one, maybe two on the play. We're going to be in a second down and 18 for California. And I think my point from earlier still stands. I think there's no one 
more entertaining to watch than Eric Willis the third because when if you're in a foot race with him, you're that, losing. You're losing every time. There's n there's no winner there. There's no winner there. Two thirty seven left to go. Black with the awkward snap pulls it down. Has a man. The great catch mm -hmm. on that far side. That's Demonte Martin and Martin. He got up there for that one. Pulls it in just shy of that first down marker. Right around it. I think. I think they're gonna give it to him. Oh. No, they're not. The chain gang was moving forward, and I think they were misunderstood. It's gonna be just shy. Third down and three now for Cal. That was an amazing snag there on the sideline. He looks like he was flying for a second. The way he just flew up with both of his arms to grab that out the air. Yeah, Martin showing off the hops a little bit. Third and two now for the Vulcans from their own 33. Just under two minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Black with another weird snap. But hand off to Boyd, and Boyd just muscling forward, just fighting for extra yardage. And Boyd going to get brought down right around the first down marker, trying to see where the officials are going to spot it here. Looks like it's going to be... They're going to stop the clock. And they're going to stop the clock and going to do an official measurement because, like I said, that one, if it's not if it's not a first down, inches short from maybe like a postcard or two from being a first down. Definitely. I can't even tell from here. Yeah, I can't quite tell. And they're going to bring on the chain unit. And the clearing coach... Not very happy about this over there on the far side, giving the officials an earful. And now for the official measurement. Looks it looks like, like it's going to be a first down Vulcans. Just, just long enough for the first down. First and 10 from the 34. First and 10 now from the 34. And the clock now back underway once again. Well, can still have two timeouts and plenty of time, but definitely want to get six on this drive. Black gets the snap, has a man deep down the field trying to find Hopkins, and Hopkins is ripped up in the back. That's going to be number 27, Terrell Booth, who got a, a fistful of Amari Hopkins' backside. And that's going to be an incomplete pass, but it's going to be a pass interference against uh, against Booth and the Golden Eagles. California definitely going to take that there. No completion, but guess what? Still got the yardage out of it. It doesn't matter. does not matter. Fifteen yard penalty, automatic first down. It's going to be a first and ten from the 49. Let me take a look at that replay again. Hopkins had some space. And I think the safety over top would have been able to make some good coverage, but I don't think Booth was aware of it. Just tried to uh, tried to make a play. It's going to cost the Golden Eagles desperately. First and 10 now from the Vulcans from their own 49. Black gets the snap. Quick throw to Willis on the near side. Willis able to get around one man. Breaks a tackle. Willis running up the sideline. And Willis still going inside the 20. Brought down at the 19. And... I mean, he's faster than everyone, and now he's breaking off some tackles, too. No one can bring him down. Even on that little slip-up, no one was able to get to him in time. He wasn't even brought to the ground. just held by his jersey, just dragging the defense. You know, Eric Willis III does not care. That was Shane Kemper finally just holding on for dear life to, to the back of Willis's jersey and forcing him out of bounds. First and 10 now in the red zone for California from the Clarion 18-yard line. Three receivers on the near side and has Willis one on one on the near side. Clarion looking to send some pressure here. F five players on this front. Boyd in the backfield. Black trying to find Willis. And Willis pulls it in for the Vulcan touchdown. Trust his receiver all the way, and Willis reads it beautifully, pulls it in, and the Vulcan strike just before the end of the half. That was amazing adjustment there by Willis. Covered greatly, but just a little bit of outside leverage he had to get that ball, snag it in. And take a look at that, that throw again, trying to find him on that back shoulder, and Willis turns around, adjusts beautifully in the air, and pulls it in. 
he gets his touchdown either way. It's not the 70-yard one on that first play, but the drive begins and ends with an Eric Willis, the third touchdown. Biko's kick is up, and Biko's kick is good. 17-7 the score, 103 left to go here in the first half. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on CUTV. CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium as the Vulcan strike again. Eric Willis the third with another touchdown on the season. Extends the score to 17-7, restores the 10-point lead that the Vulcans have. 103 left to go here in the first half. I think Clarion, this is their time to try to strike. They have all three timeouts. They have a minute left. And the Vulcans get the ball back to start the second half, so I wouldn't be surprised if Clarion tried to go all out to try to get some points on the board before the the close of the first half. Most definitely Clarion doesn't want California to score now with uh, a little over a minute left and then just go out and uh, take Clarion out of this early. Corbin going to receive Biko's kick and going to take a knee in the end zone for a touchback. And we can take a look once again at that replay from the touchdown black. Great placement on the throw, just putting it where only Willis and Willis alone can catch it. And Willis with a great adjustment midair, in the air to pull that one down. And you can take a look at our reaction of the play as well. You're a little bit more uh, enthusiastic as I am. I, my problem is I couldn't tell if you caught it or not. <laughs> forgot this camera's over here looking at me. <laughs> as did I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of forgot about it as well. First and ten for the Golden Eagles. Benedict gets the snap. Benedict throw, and Benedict's pass is caught by Eleni and brought down immediately. Amazing uh, catch there through all that contact. Eleni brought down by, I believe, Rashawn Murray, number 20, on the reception as the time rolls underneath a minute. F flag thrown, and it looks like, I believe, a false start or some movement at least around the line of scrimmage. It's going to be encroachment against the offense. It's going to be Karan Alain, who just made the reception, going to move into the neutral zone to try to draw the Vulcans offside, but an injured Golden Eagle down on the ground, number 70, Mark Mirzak Jr., the offensive lineman going to go down injured on the play. Definitely not something you want to see, especially towards the very end of this first half with 51 seconds left before halftime. I think if you're California, I think you've played about as good of a first half as maybe you would have expected as Mirzak able to get back to his feet and make his way off of the field. Hopefully everything's all right with him. He's going to be able to make another appearance in this game. We can take a look a couple of the scores around around the conference. Millersville up 21 to seven over Lockhaven right now. About eight minutes left in the second quarter of that game. Kutztown up 14 to seven against East Stroudsburg. Kutztown who beat Shepard last week, and East Stroudsburg who's undefeated right now. One of I believe they're nationally ranked as well. And the Golden Bears have a, a, a 14 to seven lead with about 45 seconds left to go there in the first half of that game. So it just sounds like Kutztown are um, playing spoiler this year to start the game or start the season. Shippensburg and Shepard, another game going on as well so far this season. I'm trying to wait for the uh, the uh, the video to see what the score of this game is right now. Shepard up nine to three over Shippensburg in the second quarter as well. Shout out Claire from Shippensburg. Yeah, shout out our dear friend. Who some of us met, no, we all met <laughs> Claire Rothermel. 
who took her talents to Shippensburg. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait until we tell her that we we mentioned her in this broadcast later. <laughs> she's gonna have to try to figure out where we are. Fifty-one seconds left. Uh, first and fifteen. Benedict screen pass. This one caught by Simmons. Simmons has some blockers ahead of him, but Simmons gonna get brought down at the forty-one. Sim and Benedict trying to get up quickly to try to spike it, but there's gonna be an injured Vulcan down on the field. And the Vulcans make their way back to the sidelines. Going to bring up a sec er, second down and six now after the nine-yard gain on that screen pass to Simmons. 37 seconds left here in this half. Uh, Clarion definitely looking to see if they can push the uh, ball down the field. If not, at least to get a field goal out of this drive. Like I said, the kicker, Andrew Curtis, number 44 for Clarion, is five for seven on the season and field goal opportunities, but... His longest is 30 yards, so it's going to be a pretty. It's like if you're gonna have to pick up a decent chunk of yardage to try to get within his range so far on the year. Clock adjusted back up to 40 seconds since California is down with an injury. So another three seconds tacked on. Clarion still with two timeouts, and so they still have plenty of time. I feel like. If you're them, though, you're going to have to go for maybe a big play here on the second down. Try to see if you can get it within Vulcan territory. If not, even if an incompletion uh, in, ensues, there is a stoppage in the clock. Anything to stop the clock at this point to help out Clarion. Yeah, and the Vulcan's still down injured. But just want to talk about so far in this game, the, the offense on that drive really picked up. I mean, after you score a touchdown on the first play and it gets called back, I think it's very easy to uh, kind of drop your heads and maybe lose a bit of confidence, but the Vulcans didn't, and they were able to, to just overcome that first down and 20 and were able to march their way all the way down the field, take a ton of time off the clock to wind down the second quarter, and they were still able to get into the end zone anyway. Most definitely California on that amazing just back attack uh, towards the far pylon of the end zone. And it looks like the injured Vulcan going to finally make his way to his feet. And I believe it is number, it looks like it's number eight, Israel Xavier. And Xavier on the season, came into the season injured. And I, one of the key players on this Vulcan defense came back last week and was great in the game last week had a sack in that game against um, in that in that game against Edinburgh and with the help of his teammates is going to carry his way is going to make his way off the field they're going to carry him off and obviously a tough scene but hopefully everything's all right with him because when he's on the field for California on the defensive end he makes differences for this team and the t obviously the team's better off with him on the field than off the field and Hopefully everything's all right with him. Most definitely still struggling to get to the sideline. Looks like Caring didn't work. He wants to try and uh, limp off the field with the help of his teammates. Yeah, it's uh, number 72, Noah Silva, and number 38, uh, Gage um, Raj, I believe, just trying to like, help him off, off the field. And they're finally able to make it to this near side on the out-of-bounds marker. And Clarion, the offense and the defense for both teams back out there, ready to go. I think after a stop like or after a long delay like that, I think for both teams you need to make make sure you get back into the right state as the clock going immediately. Play action or pump fake that pass incom or intercepted. Excuse me, straight to the Vulcans. Looks like it is marked as incomplete. Flag on the play. It was with Sean Murray who came down with the ball for California. But two flags thrown in the back, but I was all sorts of messed up on that play. The pump fake pass straight to Murray, but again, flags thrown in the backfield. That can only mean one thing. Roughing the passer ag again against the Vulcans. This time, number 59, it's going to be Armani uh, Caraballo. 15 yards tacked on to the end of it. And that's where I think there's a bit of confusion because 
they pushed the ball all the way up to the Vulcan 21. Coach Dunn's trying to figure out why the ball was pushed up so far because it's a 15-yard penalty. Ball completely flip the field position. Yeah, and I think the Changing referees moving back. I think the referees might have thought that Clarion caught the pass and they tacked on 15 yards to the end of the play, and so they're gonna move this ball back further because, like I said, it was the pass was intercepted. It was Murray who came down with it, but again this season that's another takeaway that the Vulcans have had, where uh, it's been taken away from them because of a, a because of a penalty. And so now the ball is going to be, the referee is trying to figure out where the ball is going to be placed. And I think uh, everyone is a little bit confused on where exactly this ball needs to go. And the referee is having discussions, and I think they finally agree that the ball should be placed on the Vulcan 42-yard line. We figured it out. We got it. Indeed, we did. It may have taken a bit, and I think Coach Dunn trying to get an explanation because the ball being placed on the 43 is way different than being placed on the 21. Yeah, the 20. They, were, they was already in field goal range with that uh, penalty, if that's what, uh, what was happening. Yeah, that would have been the longest personal foul penalty ever, I think. <laughs> it would have been about 40-something, 50-something yards and tacked on onto it. 28.9 seconds left to go here in the first half. Clarion looking to add some points before the end of the quarter. Benek back to throw his pass. Caught and pushed out of bounds. Great, great reception on that far side by Andy Martin. That's another first down, and he's able to get out of bounds as well. First and 10 now for the Golden Eagles from the 29. Great situational awareness there by Clarion getting the ball to the outside receiver and uh, the receiver going out of bounds to stop the clock. 23.9 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Benedict back to throw again. His pass brought caught in, but, but going to be uh, brought down inbounds, and that's going to be Clarion calling their second time out. It's going to be second down. I I'm trying to see where the officials spot it. I think it's going to be enough for the first down. So another first first down and 10 for Clarion from the 19 with 18 seconds left. And I think if you're Clarion, you have two real shots at the end zone here. You have one timeout left. Because you really don't want to go down inbounds, burn your last timeout. Because if you have another play and it goes down inbounds, you're rushing to try to get back up to the line, spike it, to then go for a field goal. So I think you have real, two real shots at the end zone here. And if you don't, if you can't get in, take the field goal. Most definitely, I wouldn't be. I'd be surprised if I saw anything uh, closer than a pass from the at least past the five-yard line. And like I've always said, I've said this on all the broadcasts. I'd be a horrible coach because I'd, I'd always be, I I play I'd like to coach like I'm playing bad and like I'd be going for every touchdown, no field goals allowed. Like, time, I'm play, like I'm playing Retro Bowl. <laughs> like you're playing Retro Bowl. Timeout called for California this time. Trying to catch the quarterback off guard there, it looks like. Doesn't want him to get into a rhythm, keep him from uh, being moving as much as possible to try and throw him out of a rhythm. Trying to do that as well. I also think Coach Dunn was, also, was just trying to see what Clarion and their offense were going to come out there with for this play and try to make some potential adjustments to it. They added a few more seconds onto the clock as it ran off as they blew the whistle. So 18 seconds left to go at the at the end of this first half. And if you're the Vulcans, I think a stop, obviously a stop here would be huge, but it would be so important to take at that 10-point lead into the second half. California, <coughs> California now getting back out onto the field. You know, the Vulcan defense... Makes their way back on. The Clarion offense going to make their way back on as well. And maybe Coach Dunn and the defense have made the adjustments that they deem necessary for this play. First and 10 from the 19. Two Four rec receivers for Clarion, two on either side. 
Simmons in the backfield. Benedict gets the snap. Benedict firing down the seam, and that pass incomplete. Trying to find Kendall. Kendall had a few steps on his man, but that pass overthrown. <laughs> that was a dart there uh, by Clary, and just darting that to the receiver, fortunately, was a little high and a little too far. And Benedict has shown he can run the ball, has thrown some, has shown like he can have some zip on the ball, but hasn't been the most accurate so far in this game. Second and 10 from the 19. Clarence remaining with these four receivers set. Benedict getting the snap, stepping up, and Benedict going to get brought down. That's Eve Sanago in the backfield with a sack. And Clarion going to take their timeout with 3.1 seconds left. Field goal unit running onto the field. And I think if you're Clarion, I think you uh, may be a, a bit disappointed with yourselves. As you were driving down the field, you're making good progress. Could have had another chance to crack into the end zone, go for one more play, but great pressure from this Vulcan front who were, are now finally able to bring Benedict down to the backfield. Because Benedict so far this game has done a fantastic job at just stepping up, evading the pressure, and when, even when the pressure does get to him, he's able to throw it away. But now it's going to be Curtis and the punt, or the field goal unit, excuse me, on the field for Clarion to try to make it a one-score game going into half. 3.1 seconds left. Clarion looking to, uh, to cut this down to only a seven-point deficit. Curtis's kick is up, and Curtis's kick is blocked by the Vulcans. The Vulcans shut the door on the Clarion advance, and that's going to be the end of the first half here at Adamson Stadium. The Vulcans 17, the Golden Eagles 7. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back for the second half between California and Clarion here on CUTV. CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM WCAL Power 92, and your home for the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Are you a Penn West California student looking to get involved in media? You have two great choices, and for both, all majors are welcome. CUTV is the home for Vulcan Sports. Be a part of 80-plus live games both home and on the road. We're looking for announcers, camera operators, graphic operators, and much more. There are also opportunities to develop your own shows. Go to our YouTube page, CUTV Sports 1, and see all of the content. WCAL Radio gives you the opportunity to play your music and develop your own show. Be heard locally over the air in a 40-mile radius and worldwide online. That's 91.9 FM, Power 92. SAI Media of CUTV and WCAL. Get out, join up, be seen, and be heard.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adams and Stadium as we begin the second half between California and Claire, where the Vulcans have a 17 to 7 lead after one half of play. John Sape, JJ Michael Robinson back again with you once more. And uh, it's been a great game so far if, uh, for by the Vulcan standards. I mean, they've done it on both, on all, th in all three phases, actually, like we talked about at the beginning of the game. They've uh, scored some, p put some points on the board, they've gotten some good stops on defense, and uh, at the end of that first half, they blocked a f uh, field goal. So, I mean, they're doing it all. I agree. Can't ask for a better display out there, especially towards the end of that uh, first half going down, scoring the touchdown, forcing Clarion to kick a field goal, which ends up getting blocked, which leads California uh, leading the Clarion Golden Eagles 17-7. to we can take a look at some of the stats from that first half. Vulcans with 14 first towns compared to the Golden Eagles 11. In terms of total yardage, 203 yards for the Vulcans compared to 165 for Clarion. 114 through the air for Black and the Vulcans compared to 58 for Benedict and the Golden Eagles. And I think one of the bigger ones on this on like our stat sheet here, time of possession, 17 minutes and 56 seconds in that first half for California. Able to... Uh, just use the clock beautifully, able to take a ton of time off on their drives, and we're still able to put up 17 points in that first half, just commanding full domination of that first half from California. Most definitely, California also scoring every time they're in the end zone, going for three for three uh, on scoring alone. Clarion only scoring one out of the two times they've been in their end zone. And I think another one as well, third down conversions, three for five for Clarion, so... A nice percentage, well, I believe it was 60%. I can do math. Five for eight for California. I think I'm trying, I'm going to do the math quickly on the top of my, pull out the calculator, 62.5%. So the Vulcans slightly edging out ahead of that one. I didn't have to use the calculator for that. Gary, don't show the footage. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to begin the second half. The Vulcans now going from right to left. The Golden Eagles going from left to right. The Vulcans going to receive. The second half kickoff here is going to be Hamlin and Williams standing in and around their 4-5 or five yard line awaiting the kick this time, I believe, from, uh, I believe it's Andrew Curtis back to kick for the Golden Eagles. Excuse me, it's number 43, Hunter Robertson trying to kick the ball off for the Golden Eagles to begin the second half. Robertson's kick deep, going to get us underway. Going to be fielded by Hamlin at the one-yard line. Hamlin. Hamlin's got a ton of room. Hamlin able to break one tackle. Hamlin nearly able to bounce it out to the outside and break another. But he's going to get brought down right around the 30-yard line. So still a nice return, but had the potential for a lot more. Definitely amazing cutback towards the far sideline, just gliding up the side, ending up at the 30-yard line, which is a nice... Uh, Gain of at least five if he would have taken the fair catch. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I saw him pounding the ground afterwards, a little bit upset with himself because could have turned the corner there, just needed to keep his balance a little bit longer, but a bit unfortunate nonetheless. But the Vulcans will start out with the ball on their own 30-yard line, first and 10. Black and the Vulcan offense back out here once again. Black handoff to McCann. McCann back into the game. Going to pick up a few before being stuffed back immediately. Picks up two on the play. And we saw McCann in that first half go out injured for a little bit. So it's nice to see him back out on the field getting some run here in the second half. To be honest, I didn't expect him to be back after how long it took for him to come up after that injury. But luckily for him and for the Vulcan team in general, he is back on the field uh, playing like he never left. I think the offense is going to be better off for it. Second and eight now from the 32. Flag thrown before the play. This one pointed against the defense. Never mind. I, uh, the referee was <laughs> the, the lines judge on the near side uh, pointed the wrong way. So it's going to be a false start against the Vulcans. that will back him up five yards. Second and 13 now. Gives them a bit more room uh, to work with I think like give the uh, backs you up a little bit gives you some room opens the field up a bit more trying to justify penalties because uh obviously you don't you never want a penalty to go against your team second and 15 now from the 27 black gets the snap 
has some time firing and has a man open. And the pass is caught at the first down marker by Eric Willis, the third. And I think they're going to mark him. They're going to give him the first down. It looks like the referee may have marked him just shy, but Willis, great spatial awareness, pulls in the grab and picks up the first down. Amazing pass there. Looked like it was a dart directly to the, the uh, yard marker. Another first down. And the Vulcans offense continues to roll along, rolling through history here. 13-20 left to go here in the third quarter. Black in the gun. Hands this one off to McCann. McCann has some blockers in front of him, just needs to find some room. Going to turn around and fall his way forward, picking up three, maybe four on the play. Yeah, he came out two on the play. Clarion's really been good at keeping these uh, runs uh, pretty short for uh, McCann, only averaging at least five yards per carry on uh, with his longest uh, of the first half being 16 yards before he was uh, taken out of the game with that minor injury. So far in this game, just um, Eric Wills, the third, six catches for 93 yards and a touchdown in this game. He's been phenomenal once again for California. Second and eight from the 45. Handoff this time to McCann again, and McCann gets stuffed as there's another pl a Clarion player trying to jump on top of the pile to bring him down, but gets back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing more. Third down and long for Cal. Clarion really been good, strong in this start of this first, second half. Um, stopping these runs for very short gain, short to no gain. Volgans who were able to convert a lot on the third downs last la in the last half. Trying to continue that stretch here. Third and eight. Four receivers out for California. Ball on their own, 42. Wouldn't be surprised to see Black test the secondary once again black back to throw stepping up firing that pass is caught again by willis and willis makes a man miss before being brought down at the 36 they're at great coverage by clarion but when black and willis are on like that there's nothing you can do yeah they go to better like peanut butter and uh they go together like peanut butter and jelly nothing can really stop them when they're together especially eric willis the third on those yards after catch he was covered very nicely by clarion but uh well, no one was able to really get a hand on him. Yeah, when those two are on are in sync, I mean, there's there's they're the key that unlocks this defense. It's it's wraps. I mean, this, the Clarion defense needs to uh, needs <laughs> needs to get a stop on them. First and ten. Black testing deep down the field. That pass is caught in the end zone for the touchdown. That's DeMonte Martin pulling in the throw. Another big play from this Vulcan offense, and they blow the game wide open. California once again coming out on their opening drive of the second half, going for a nice touchdown pass towards the uh, close side of the field. California really making some statements in these early drives. And that's some, uh, some confidence in your receivers if you're Davis Black. Uh, Martin had his had his corner beat, but Black just threw it up there in hopes that Martin's going to catch it, and Martin brought it down. Biko on to attempt the extra point. His kick is up, and Anthony Biko's kick is good. 24-7 to score, 10.55 left to go here in the third quarter. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back here on CTV, CTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepard. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium. 37-yard touchdown pass from Black to Martin. And the Vulcans strike first in the second half. Extend the lead to 17, 24-7 to score. Biko, his kick going to get us underway. Kick going to be fielded by Elaine. 
at his own one yard line of lane, looking for some room here. Nice return to bring us back past the 25 to the 27. And we're gonna take one more look at that touchdown pass once again. Black, just a ton of, uh, uh, just so much time back there. And like I said, Martin able to get past his defender and Black did everything he could to get it to him and Black did exactly that. You take a look at our reaction of the play. This camera, I, I, I don't think like you, it. I think, uh, <laughs> and again, I, I'm excited, but it doesn't look like it. First and 10, keeper by Benedict. Benedict keeping the feet churning, picking up some good yardage. Six, maybe seven on the carrier from Zach Benedict. And in that first half, he was... The entirety of the Clarence offense pretty much 43 yards through the air, 64 on the ground in that first half. <laughs> what is that? Uh, 107 yards. Clarion in total in that first half, 165. So 107 coming from just him alone. Definitely one of these core pieces of this offense. Man in motion, second down and four. Handoff this time. It's going to be enough for the first down. Clarion going to take it. I believe it was Simmons on the carry. Or excuse me, it was Elaine on the carry. And that's going to be enough for the first time. First and 10 now from the 37. Nine forty-five left to go here in the third quarter. Clarion definitely needing to strike here, at least within this quarter to be uh, closer to the California score. Benedict keeping it. And the Vulcans unable to bring him down behind the line of scrimmage, but able to, able to clean up on it. One of them was able to get back there, but it was Solomon Jr. who tripped him up, and Toby finishing him off. Benedict gains two on the play. Really running all over us from the quarterback position last half. Uh, California really able to be able to focus up on the quarterback and uh, stop him for a short gain. Coming up second and eight now from the 40. Two receivers on the far side, two on the near. Benedict barking orders to the receiver on the near side. Benedict getting the snap, stepping up, keeping himself. The Vulcans can't quite get to him again. Benedict taking a big hit from Solomon Jr. who brings him down past the, past the first down marker again. So another first down run from the from the Golden Eagles. First glance, it looked like he wanted to come towards the close sideline, but ended up seeing that nice hole this offensive line made for him. So he decides, hey, I'm going to take this ball up down the middle. It ain't nothing to him, man. Yeah. Ain't nothing to me, man. Zach Benedict, redshirted junior, six foot two of five from Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. He went to Elizabeth Ford High School, so not too far from the site of the game here today. 8-10 left to go here in the third quarter. Man, and Corbin in motion. Corbin going to receive the call. And Corbin, ball comes out as he's going down to the ground, and the Vulcans fall on top of it. And the Vulcans are going to get the ball back. Great. Uh, Vulcans force another turnover in this game and another fumble going the way of California. Really looking like a, a carbon copy of the first half, uh, first quarter, shall I say. Uh, California scoring a touchdown and forcing a fumble. California looking to go now capitalize on this amazing uh, switch of possession. Yeah, and on that replay you saw it looked like the ball was starting to trickle its way out before Corbin was able to make it to the ground. And the Vulcans will take that every day of the week. Another turnover to add to their defensive collection. And they're going to get the ball back. Great field position, first and 10 from their own 43. 7.55 left to go here in the third quarter. Black and the offense back out there once again to take the reins. Play action pack, Black rolling to his right. Pass is caught on the near side and a nice gain. That was number 42, Aiden Curie on the reception. Picks up about seven on the play. The ball going to be spotted at midfield. Three. 
Black calling out some orders to the offensive line there to adjust some protection, it looks like. Seven different receivers with a reception today from Black. Who hands this one off to McCann, and McCann going to power his way forward. He's going to get marked down right around the first down marker, and I think with forward progress, they're going to give it to him. But Black just spreading the love here today, able to get a bunch of the offensive member of uh, players involved in this passing attack. New set of downs for the Vulcans. First and 10 now in Clarion territory. Ball on their 47-yard line. Two receivers on the near side. One on the far. Curie and uh, I believe it's Boyd in the backfield with Black. Black gets the snap. Play action again. Black under some pressure. Going to get thrown down for the sack. And that was number 25, Matthew McGregor. And he was on top of Black quickly. Black looked like he wanted to roll out of the pocket. Unfortunately for him, he does run straight into the Clarion defensive line. It looks like he felt the pressure coming and tried to spin away from it, but ran straight into the waiting and loving arms of Matthew McGregor. Brings him down 13-yard loss, second and 13. The ball now back all the way on the Vulcans' 40-yard line. Second and 23. Just under six minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Black to throw. Black under pressure again. Screen pass as Boyd pulls that one in. And Boyd trying to turn the corner. Runs over one player before going out of bounds. Picks up a couple on the play. Still a third down and extremely long for the Vulcans here. Third and 19 now for California. The ball in there, 44. Need to make it to the Clarion, 43, to convert here. Clarion playing some very off defensive coverage from the cornerbacks. They're going to allow the Vulcans to get some stuff underneath, but not going to do They're going to send the house as well. Black stepping up, and it was Black throwing towards his near side. The pass is caught. Past the 40-yard line. Might just be short of the first down. Yeah, it's going to be Hopkins pulling in the grab. He's going to be a three yards shy of that first down. So a valiant effort from the Vulcans, and they're going to keep the offense out there. Fourth and three from the Clarion 40. I think if they go for this, I think it's a coach just trying to uh, slowly just step on the neck of the Golden Eagles and try to drain them of life here. Fourth and three from the, the Golden Eagles, 40. Four receivers set from California. Bless it. In motion now to the far side. Defense now playing very push coverage. Black, the throw. Incomplete, trying to find Bless it. That one a little bit too low and behind them. And the Vulcans come up short on the fourth down. The Clarion Golden Eagles will take over on downs. Big stop for them because if the Vulcans would have tacked on a few more points here, I think maybe you could have called it over and done with. Still plenty of time, but I think if you're California and historically in this matchup, maybe you would see some things out to, to end the game. But Clarion still have a chance to tack on some more points here and make it a close game going into the last quarter of play. Definitely feel like Clarion definitely needing some points out of this drive, if not a touchdown, at least a field goal to stay alive during this game. First and 10 now from their, their own 40. Benedict gets the snap. Benedict under pressure. Median. Benedict getting brought down in the backfield. That's number 99, Gage Hill, who brings him down immediately. A big loss on first down. Take a look at that uh, play again. And this, this Vulcan front has been just on top of Benedict at all times. And that time... Hill able to get there first and Abe finally able to bring Benedict down another sack in this game for the Vulcan defense. Second and 17 now. California really deciding, hey, let's bring the house so we can't run nowhere, keeping the quarterback contained, especially nice for a nice sack right there. And there's a flag on the play. Yeah, flag thrown. False start. Going to go against number 68, Jacob Domer, the center. Going to get called for the false start. And I think that... This happens a lot, especially when you run the, these motion-based offenses is where I feel like the players sometimes get a little bit too antsy just trying to get ready, trying to prepare for their blocking assignments. 
We've seen this a few times from Clarion in this game where they've jumped, uh, or they've uh, had a false start uh, before the play even happened. And I think that the Vulcans sending a ton of pressure also kind of shows that they don't have any confidence in Benedict to sling it down the field. Benedict now stepping up, and Benedict getting brought down again. That time, it's John Hutchinson with the sack. Brings up a big third down for Cal. Amazing defense. You can see just on this drive alone, not allowing anyone open down the field, able to swarm the quarterback quickly. And now it is third and 25. And like I was saying, I think if you're California, you've seen, you've seen uh, Benedict like, run you into the ground whenever he's able to get out of the pocket. I think the Vulcans, not afraid of his arm, they're just they're sending everyone after him and making, sh making him have to make a throw which we've seen him overthrow a few times. Third and 25, Benedict stepping up. Benedict throwing. Benedict's pass completed and to his receiver. That was number 84, Zach Kendall, bringing in the reception. He's going to be brought down at the 47, about three yards shy of the first down marker. And Clarion have some decisions to make, and they're going to send on the punting unit. Amazing defense there, uh, California dropping back, allowing the short passes to go for a little bit of a game, getting close to the first down, but with the, the safeties in the back, not letting anyone pass that first down marker. And I think if you're clearing, and you maybe wanted to go for it, but I think too risky, because if you don't get it, you're giving the Vulcans excellent field position. Wilson back to punt, and Willis receiving the punt, and Willis going to get hit immediately as he brings it. He's going to get sumo slammed into the ground by Ray Jackson on the on the punt coverage. And the Vulcans will start up shop first and 10 from their 21. Amazing coverage there by the Clarion um, kick team, punt team, excuse me, to just be able to get there in time and just wrap him up and slam him to the ground. Yeah, I think Willis thought he maybe had a little bit more, uh, more room between him and the oncoming uh, special teams unit than he than he had and Jackson right there able to bring him down but the Vol he's able to hold on the Vulcans get the ball back now first and 10 from their own 21 151 left to go here in the third quarter the Vulcans in control of the game here Willis in motion touch pass and Willis trying to get around the outside and Willis does great blocking and is going to pick up six on the play Amazing use of some motion. California has been using some back and forth motion with a tight end alone to catch the defense off guard. This time, taking the receiver, and doing a pop pass jet sweep. And I think if you're Wilkins, I think that's probably one of the smarter things you can do, because you want you want that man on the ball at all times. You want the ball in his hands because he can make plays and just getting him involved in all sorts of fashions makes the have to respect him and makes the team or it makes the uh, the other jobs for the receivers much easier. Second and five, Black back to throw. Black trying to find a receiver on the near side. The pass is caught by Noah Hamlin around the 45-yard line. Thought maybe he bobbled it for a second, but able to bring that one in, and it's going to be a big first down for California. Definitely. I did see a little bit of a bobble there, but he was able to pull it in in time and get the catch on the near sideline. Now we're under a minute to go here in the third quarter. First and 10 now from the Vulcan 44-yard line. California do need to get a playoff. 15 seconds left on the play clock, but nonetheless, two receivers on the far side. I believe Boyd in the backfield alongside. Boyd going to get the call, receives the handoff, and Boyd able to find some room and bumbles his way into Clarion territory. Going to get brought down at the 49, and the Vulcans going to let this one ride off. We're going to we're going to take a break. We're back for the fourth quarter of play as that's the end of the third here at Adams and Stadium. The Vulcans up 24 to 7. We'll be right back here on CTV, CTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM WCAL. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepherd. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. 
October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium as we begin the fourth quarter between California and Clarion. The Vulcans with a 24-7 lead, and the Vulcans in possession of the ball. While we have a second, we can take a look at some other scores around the league. East Stroudsburg now with the lead over Kutzon, 21-20, about two and a half minutes left there in the third quarter. Lockhaven now leading Millersville, 24-21, and Shepard and Shippensburg. Uh, Shepard now with a 23-13 lead over Ship. Black under center, play action pass, and rolling now to his left. Black's throw, incomplete, great coverage on that far side by number 24, Che Trevena from the Golden Eagles. It's going to bring up a third and three now for California. Pass looked a little bit dangerous there. Clarion closing in extremely fast on that bootleg pass. Vulcan's making a slew of substitutions here for this third down and... Golden Eagles make some in response. Three receivers on the near side for Black. Willis, the lone receiver at the top of your screen. Boyd in the backfield with Black. Black gets the snap. Quick throw and quick catch made that time by Martin. Martin's going to pick up enough for the first down. Clarion really closing in on the Vulcans very quickly on these short passes, letting them get the short stuff, but taking them down just about immediately. I think if you're California, that doesn't even matter to you because you're, you're picking up the first down. You don't care. That's just enough for the first uh, for a new set of downs. First and 10 now from the 44. You know what they say, first downs before touchdowns. That's the only way to do it. First and 10. Draw play, Boyd. With that full head of steam, but runs into his own, his own blocker there. Still picks up four on the play, but had the potential for a lot more. I think Boyd uh, kind of lost track of it there. No, uh, no huddle for the Vulcans. Quick throw and quick catch by Blessed, who's going to get spun out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Quick gain. He's going to bring up a third and short for California. Third and two now for the Vulcans from the Clarion 36. Black getting the signal from the near side sideline. Hand off to Boyd and Boyd able to f get through the seam and able to pick up the first down. He's going to get stopped at the 31, five yard gain on the carry and that's enough for another Vulcan first down. Boyd has been really amazing just on these up the middle runs, just dashing through the line and diving for those extra efforts after he's been wrapped up. Yeah, nine rushes for 33 yards on the afternoon for him. 12 rushes for 46 yards for Eric McCann as well. So a nice balanced rushing attack for the Vulcans. And Davis Black even has 18 yards on the ground as well. So all phases of the Vulcan offense coming into play here. First and 10, Black back to throw, stepping up, evading pressure. That throw trying to find McCann just too high and far out of his out of his reach, incomplete. McCann pushing the defender off of him after he is stepped over. Definitely not happy that the pass was incomplete or that uh, the little step over he did there. You yeah, thought maybe there's a bit of a, some disrespect there on that play, but I think... Uh, no love loss for both of these teams. Obviously, uh, play each other a lot. And being now uh, some sister schools inside of the Penn West branch, uh, both teams wanting to one-up each other, wanting uh, to be the dominant school in the, sporting, uh, in the sporting section. And the Vulcans got the better of Edinburgh last week and are well on their way of getting the better of Clarion today. 
Second down run to McCann. McCann makes a man miss. Great juke from McCann. And McCann going to get brought down well inside of the Clarion red zone. It's going to get marked out at the 14-yard line. 17-yard rush from Eric McCann the third. Amazing move there. He hit a little juke move as he cut back to the outside, making some people miss. Just amazing effort. He is an incredible player all around. Yeah, there's a ton of players on this Vulcan offense where they're just – I think like electric is probably the best way to like they're electric when they get the ball in their hands. Uh, Willis being one of them, McCann being another, and Boyd also in the backfield is one where if you give him some open space in the football, he'll do some crazy things. First and ten from the fifteen, handoff to Boyd. Boyd able to f find the space and Boyd going to get brought down just shy of the end zone. Fourteen yard rush on the carry, waited for the blocks to 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 get there. As we can take a look at the replay again and able to just power through. Like I said earlier, he is just insane what he can do, especially up the middle through the offensive line. Offensive line obviously doing their part in that as well. Offensive line has been making holes all day for this running game. Yeah, they've been f phenomenal so far in this game. First and goal now from the two. From, from the two. Black under center, McCann in the backfield. Black toss to McCann. Great blocking. McCann into the end zone for the Vulcan touchdown. He gets himself another one, and the Vulcans tack on six more. 30-7, to 11.06 to go here in the fourth, awaiting the Beco extra kick. California running to the outside. Outside receivers picking up some blocks for an amazing touchdown run there. Yeah, I want to say, like, the receivers there did a phenomenal job at blocking. I think it was... Uh, number 14, Logan Fister, who came onto the field, and he was able to seal that block on the outside, allow the Vulcans, and allow McCann to get the space he needed. And McCann gets in for six. Biko out there to make it seven. This team so far, this game, has just been able to play all around amazing football. Biko's kick is up, and Biko's kick is good. 31 7 to score, 11 06 to go. We'll be, take a break. We'll be right back around CTV, CTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91 9 FM. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. But what? I'm high. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium as Eric McCann III capped off a 12-play, 79-yard drive with a two-yard touchdown run to make the game a 31-7 score. The Vulcans in cruise control now as we come down the stretch against the Golden Eagles. California offense really not, uh, not wanting to lift that pedal up from the gas, uh, just pushing down on it. I doubt it that we'll see that at all through the rest of this game. Awkward kick from Biko, gonna get fielded at the one yard line. Great return from Clarion and great tackle in the open field. It was Elaney on the return and it was number 14, Logan Fister on the tackle. And I don't think if Fister doesn't make that tackle, Elaney <laughs> ends up into the end zone for a touchdown there. Elaney a little upset that he, wasn't eight, that he got tripped up there. Looked like he had a lot of green in front of him towards that end zone. Yeah, too much green. What are you going to do? Blaze swinging the hammer down there, attacking on 31 points as the band counting out each and every one of them. Man, Blaze, what a, what a guy. icon for the school. First and 10 from the 22. It's going to be Benedict stepping up in his throw. Incomplete over of his intended receiver, Ray Jackson, and Benedict had Jackson. Jackson had a few steps, but uh, that pass incomplete once again. 
ball overthrown just a little bit too far in front and a little too far behind. I think uh, we've um, we've said that a lot this game. Benedict, 6 for 12 for 65 yards. And like I said, I think that's why the Vulcans have been have decided to send a ton of pressure. Is I don't think they're really afraid of Benedict beating them with the arm, sending the pressure, forcing him to try to make these throws, which we've seen him overthrow. Especially on the rollout passes. Benedict, this throw, a throw again. That one incomplete, trying to find Ty Corbin on that force, far side around the first down marker. And another one a little bit off the wire. Corbin maybe could have brought that one in, but uh, Benedict didn't really give him a ton of uh, a ton of room for error there. Corbin on that uh, missed catch there. It looked like it went straight through his arms on that clarion sideline. Definitely a catchable ball, though. Third and ten. I can hear the student section underneath of us. Uh, Putting up, uh, screaming, is Benedict going to keep it himself? And the Vulcans, they're not letting him go anywhere. Benedict brought down Toby on the scene, as well as Robert Washington. And the Vulcans going to get a big stop, fourth down and 10 now for the Golden Eagles. Wilson and the punt unit back on the field. California really uh, saying that no more scrambling quarterback for them today. They had enough of that in that first half of the game really tightened up their uh, their look against the quarterback. And I think, uh, like you said, they've made they've made the correct adjustments. They are not letting Benedict get anywhere, keeping one of those players as a spy, just make, following him wherever he goes, making sure he doesn't get around. Wilson back to punt. Wilson's punt going to take a favorable Golden Eagle bounce and make its way all the way to the 32-yard line of California. Vulcans will take over first and 10 from the 34, 9.51 to go. And wait a second, we can take a look at their schedule moving on for the rest of the season. Like I said, it doesn't get any easier after this. IUP next week in the Cold Bowl, 2 o'clock kickoff. That's going to – that if, if there's a game this week you don't want to miss, it's going to be the, sh the IUP uh, Slippery Rock game at 6 o'clock. No, there's a game you don't want to miss next week. It's IUP versus California because every time those two teams face off against each other, it's blow for blow. It's a bloodbath. And – you never know who's going to come out on top. Most definitely. One yeah. of my favorite games that I saw last year. It was a great game that didn't go the Vulcans' way, and I think maybe a bit unfortunately, and maybe they have a chance to right their wrongs from last year. Black play action, quick throw is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Deontay Williams on the near side. I think Williams uh, turned his head upfield before fully, secu fully securing that reception and it falls incomplete. Definitely, he's felt that pressure coming to straight towards him like a firing missile. Got a little, uh, wanted to cut up field before he got the ball, which has resulted in the incompletion. Second down and 10 from the 32. The Vulcans leading 31 to seven with 9.47 to go here in the fourth quarter. Two receivers on the near side, one on the far. Black. Hand off to Boyd. Boyd has a ton of room on this outside, just needs to get to it. Great tackle made on the play by number 44, Shane Kemper. He's able to make his way across the field, brings down Boyd, but not after picking up about five on the play. Third and five now for the Vulcans from their own 37. Someone setting off some car alarms. In the parking lot, I wouldn't. Ex I would expect nothing less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nothing less from the Vulcan faithful here. As we are about to take under the nine-minute mark, three receivers on the far side. Black gets the snap, firing to the near side. That pass is caught and pushed out of bounds. That's the A.B. Johnson pulling in the reception. Going to get brought out at the Vulcan 46, or the Clarion 46 yard line. So the Vulcans now find themselves inside of Golden Eagle territory once again. Offensive line really creating a lot of time for Black there in the pocket. Pocket was very clean. No one slipping through the offensive line there. Yeah, I think they deserve their flowers here today. Sing all of their praises. Knight, Basham, Charlton, Jackson, and Tobias. The offensive line for the most part for the Vulcans here today. They've been phenomenal. They've allowed Black a ton of time to make these throws. And Black, when he has this time, is able to, to fire it on the money. First and 10 
It's, um, Williams, I believe, on the carry, just trying to get some blockers ahead of him. Able to pick up a few, but nothing more. Second down and eight now for the Vulcans. Williams still in the backfield alongside Black. Black receives the snap. Quick throw to the near side is caught for a short game. Curie on the reception again. Slipped on his way down. Going to pick up about six on the place. Third down and two. Third down and three, actually, for the Vulcans from the Clarion 39. Looks like he got a little slipped up there on the sideline. Looked like he could have gone for at least a couple more yards there. Yeah, got eaten up by the turf monster. 7.05 left to go. The Vulcans, 24-point lead. Black gets the snap play action, rolling to his right, finds Curie again, and Curie has a ton of room, has a blocker in front of him. And Curry going to get brought down at the 20-yard line. Another big gain for Maiden Curry. California really been good at keeping the uh, ball in bounds this drive, keeping this clock rolling as there's only a little over 6 minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. Davis Black in this game has <clears throat> thrown a complete pass as there's going to be a whistle blown. Telling to reset the play clock. Nine different receivers have caught a pass in this game from Davis Black. Really giving some love to this receivers. Everyone's getting a chance at this ball today. He says, I, got, I let everyone eat. Black trying to make some last second adjustments. Seven on the play clock for the Vulcans. First and ten from the Golden Eagles, 21. Handoff this time to Williams, and Williams has a ton of space, and Williams into the end zone for the Vulcan touchdown. Untouched as he falls in, and the Vulcans tack on six more. Offensive, <coughs> offensive line really said, we're going to let, let this guy just go around us, straight to the outside, cutting back in barely uh, to beat the outside corner in this uh, nice deep safety for a nice, epic, speedy touchdown run. Yeah, Williams, who finally gets the call, gets himself into the end zone, gets him on the score sheet. He's going to do a ton for his confidence and this offensive confidence. I mean, they've been just unbelievable here today. Beatco on to attempt the extra point. Snap kick is up. Beatco's kick is no good. That one pulled wide to the left. The score remains 37-7. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on CUTV. CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network at 91.9 FM WCAL. Suffering from World Cup withdrawal? Well, Vulcan men's and women's soccer has you covered. Come up and watch the region's best soccer teams do battle in a combined 18 home games at the beautiful Phillipsburg Soccer Complex. In addition, three men's and three women's home games will be featured live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans for up-to-date information on all things Vulcan soccer. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adams and Stadium as the Vulcans tack on six more with a Devontae Williams run. And I think this team has just shown their class in the second half, posting up a shutout so far to the Golden Eagles. And it seems like the Vulcans have all the answers. They've they've read the Mag they've seen the Magna Carta. They've seen the Iowa. They have all of the visions. They've seen everything that the Golden Eagles have to offer. And Clarion just has not found an answer as there's going to be a touchback. The ball is going to be brought back out to the 25. And like I said, the Vulcans just on both sides of the ball have just been dominant on the offensive end, able to drive at will, able to score some points on the defensive end. 
locking the Clarion Golden Eagles up. They, Clarion have not been able to sniff anywhere close to putting up some points until that last possession of the of the first of the first half, excuse me, whenever the Vulcans are able to block the kick. Most definitely California playing excellent here in the second half and through this game throughout only allowing the seven points. Garcia back into the game for the Golden Eagles at quarterback. Gonna keep it himself and Garcia going to get run into but able to break off some tackles before finally being brought down, makes something out of nothing, picks up two on the play, but the, the Vulcans still right there making sure that nothing happens. We haven't seen Garcia since the first quarter when he was taking out for uh, Benedict. You know, the first time we've seen him, I think, maybe the Golden Eagles uh, throwing up the, uh, the, like the, the defeated white flag a little bit, just making sure that Benedict, who has, been, has done very well in this game, has caused the Vulcans a ton of problems, uh, taking him out of the game and giving Gersio some run here down the stretch. 5.20 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Gersio gets the snap, going to keep it himself again, but the Vulcans are right there again. Gersio gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Third down and eight now for Cal. Definitely feel like half the uh, part of the reason that Benedict was pulled because he was getting lit up, especially in the second half. Just no one letting him run free, getting lit up in the backfield and just uh, during his scrambles in general, which is probably a safe option to put Garcia back in the game. And I think, like, like you mentioned earlier, the Vulcans have just, they've made the adjustments that they've needed to after the break in the second half alone. They made sure Benedict, they were giving him all sorts of trouble, making sure he couldn't run all over him in the second half. Gersio gets the snap. Gersio throwing, and Gersio's pass too far, incomplete, trying to find Martin. And the Vulcans force the Golden Eagles to go three and out. Sound like a broken record here within this game alone with Clarion throwing, overthrowing a lot of their receivers. Yeah, Clarion just, the quarterback play this game has just not been what you have needed to, to try to steal a win away here at Cal. Like we've mentioned time and time again, Clarion overthrowing the receivers. They're combined 9 for 20 on the day in passing, under 50% completion percentage. Definitely not something you want to be seeing here. And fair catch signaled for by California. You know, Wilson's punt nearly blocked. The Vulcans going to start off on offense again from their own 41. And waiting to see what uh, the coaches decide to do in terms of who's going to go back out there for the Vulcans. And it looks like they're going... Uh, to give um, Davis Black, Summer X, Alex, um, all, or all, all ledge, the backup quarterback, going to make his way onto the field. We saw him last week leave for a throw in that game against Edinburgh, and he's going to make his first appearance in this game today. Let's see what he can do against this Clarion defense. All ledge in the gun. Two receivers on the far side, one on the near. All ledge hand off this time. Cameron on the run. Cameron. Able to find some yardage, going to get pushed forward for some more. Never got brought down, but going to, the whistle going to be blown dead. Picks up six on the carry. More clarion players on the turf rather than the, the running back himself. I think the Vulcans, uh, I think that's a good sign. Definitely, especially with the score. Stay off the ground, stay clean. Stay off the ground, stay clean. Keep everyone healthy. And keep this clock rolling through history. Maybe make sure you're... Uh, your voice doesn't crack like mine just did. <laughs> Second and five from the 46. Allridge handoff again. This time Williams on the carry. Williams brushes off one defender before powering forward, picking up some extra yardage. Gets about two on the carry, but Williams showing off some uh, some great strength there. Definitely a nice little swoop there. He did to get out of that tackle, Clary, not wrapping up tight enough to bring him down for a, for a loss. And I think... You've, we, we saw maybe after that first touchdown in the second half and after that fumble recovery that the Vulcans were able to get back, it just seemed like the wind just got taken out of the Golden Eagles' wings. And it just seemed like this second half has just been a bit of a dud for them in terms of getting anything going. Third and two, handoff again to Williams. And Williams, following his blockers, is going to get to the first down marker. And that's going to be enough for the Vulcan first down. Got two, and that's all he needed. Amazing keeping this clock running with a little under three minutes le threat left to go in this game for that two-minute warning. And I think if you're California here and if you're Allridge, 
and I think if you coach as well, I think everyone in, for the Vulcans here uh, would like to tack on an extra touchdown, maybe stick it to Clarion just a little bit. Allridge, play action pass, rolling to his right, firing, and that pass is caught over the middle for a big game getting brought down at the 21-yard line. That's number 80, Deontay Williams. Or no, excuse me, number 88, Zach Slomers. Excuse me. Zach Slomers makes his first reception of the season for a big gain, 27 yards on the pass from Aldridge. Amazing uh, pass there. It was just a dart by Aldridge. 88 and 80 look very similar <laughs> in the jerseys, but that was Slomers picking up the reception. First and 10 from the 21. And the Vulcans mean business. They want... They want more. They're, they sm they still smell the blood in the water. They want more points. Allridge gets the snap, hands this off to Williams. Williams able to break off a tackle, still picks up decent yardage, three yards on that play after being hit immediately. Second and seven now from the Clarion 18. 125 left to go here in the fourth quarter. It looks like the Vulcans are going to take their time before calling this next play. So while we have a second, I can ask you, I asked Johnny this last week. So far in this game, there's still a minute left. If you had to give a player of the game out for the Vulcans here, who would you give it to? I'd give it to Black. He's been playing amazing football, hitting the balls downfield. Or if I could just give it to the entire defense. Defense has been played Amazing, especially just in the second half, not allowing any points. Williams stumbling through, gets enough for the first down. The Vulcans got to run one more play, but I agree with you. I think Black's been phenomenal, but I think my player, I'm going to go players of the game. This offensive line today I was just has been that unreal. Well. I, think, I think you always hear the credit given to a lot of like the skill positions. I mean, Black in this game, 23 for 32, 287 yards, three touchdowns on the afternoon has been lights out but this offensive line has been able to allow the Vulcans 442 yards of offense in this game and Allridge going to take the knee and that's going to wrap us up here at Adamson Stadium. JJ any final thoughts? No it was an amazing display of Vulcan football here today I'm excited for the rest of the season as we continue um, that's all I got though. And that's been your final here at Adamson Stadium. The Vulcans pick up another win, extend it to 17 straight over the Golden Eagles. California 37, Calarian 7. From everyone here at CUTV, thank you very much for watching. From our director, Gary Smith. From my broadcast partner, J.J. Robinson. My name is John Sape. We will see you in a few hours as the Vulcans, uh, our coverage of Vulcan Volleyball. But don't go anywhere. We will see you guys then on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM. Good night, California.